course, you can stay with us here on Joy News on Multi TV for all the latest updates when it comes to election 2020 at 1.30 p.m. Mama V. Oso Abwaje will come your way with election brief. Away from the elections, though, our schools reopen for third years in senior high school and second years on the gold track. We go to our reporters monitoring the situation in respective regions for Joy News. Richard Kojonyako in Cape Coast, Rafik Salam in Wa, Nana Aljima in Kumasi. You know, we're depending so much on the, uh, the arrival of the GPs. Thank God, on uh, Saturday, we took delivery of some of the uh, TTEs. They have given us uh, Veronica buckets. They have given us hand sanitizers and some thermometer guns. In fact, what we haven't received is a uh, liquid soap and then uh, tissues. But on our own, at the school level, we are trying to see. Uh, we, have, we have provided not enough anyway, but uh, the rest of the things that are left, uh, so that we will start with. And uh, all is set for us to receive the students. So, looking around, are the students have they started coming? Well, uh, just about one or two came in. Even uh, on Saturday, I saw two students who came in. Uh, it's, it's, we are just, for now, they haven't, the rest have not come. But we're expecting that any moment from uh, 12 or 11 onwards, they'll start arriving as they normally do. What about the teachers, the staff? Are they in position to teach them? Yes. The staff, we are ready. Because we had a staff meeting and uh, we discussed all that. Our timetable is ready. Housemasters are set to uh, receive the students into the various houses. How many students do you expect so, uh, to be in school? Yeah, we're expecting in all the, the candidates we have, there are 446. We, we are a single track. So we are not expecting from two goals students. So we are just dealing with the 446 candidates. In terms of social distancing, uh, classroom division, we, how are you going to go about it? We don't have a problem. Our classrooms, are, we don't have too many classrooms. And we are here, we are trying to make use of as many classrooms as possible. So we are not going to exceed the 25 maximum per, 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 per class. In some cases, uh, there will be less. What message do you have for parents uh, who have their words coming to the school? I'm only appealing to parents to try and then uh, prepare the parents, I mean, their words to come to school. We know that government is providing some uh, face masks, but we think parents should supplement because just three may not be enough. We know they are reusable, but if parents can also add a few, I think it will go a lot to help. We are also appealing to parents that uh, they should, they, they should entertain fears. We, we are prepared. Whatever protocol is put in place for their children to be safe in school, we are going to ensure that. In terms of the provisions and everything, they should help them, things that they need. Because when they come to the school here, uh, we are going to hold a, a, a assemblies with them and also let them know that the they past way of sharing sharing that, oh, this is my friend, hacking, shaking hands, and doing all those things. You see, the, uh, those who are performing abolition, they're using common things. We want them as much as possible. That should stop. So we want to impress upon parents to try and provide all the necessary things that they will need to be independent in as far as the use of these things are concerned. Let's get some more updates on the reopening of schools. Nanaya Ojima is joining us from the Ashanti region in Kumase. Uh, Nanaya, give us an update on what the situation is so far. So we've been to several schools in the Ashanti region. We started our tour from the Sakafia Senior High School in the Asquarimampo municipality. In the same municipality, we went to Kumase Academy. And from our tour so far, we've realized that most of the schools are putting in place measures to accommodate um, the final years and also students on the go track. Um, uh, obviously, um, due to COVID-19 protocols, a lot of things will have to be done to ensure that um, these students do not contract the virus. So 
in all schools, according to the head teachers, um, they've received all supplies to help ensure that the protocols are well adhered to. Um, I'm currently in Opokwari School, and here the dormitories and also classrooms have been decongested to be able to accommodate the students who are coming in. I have with me here the, the head teacher of the school, Reverend Father Stephen Osuseche, who will be updating us on what they've been able to do so far in regards to COVID-19 protocols. So, sir, um, give, bring us up to date on what you've done so far. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Um, as you know, students are coming. They started coming around the 7 a.m. this morning, and uh, we were ready by 6 o'clock to receive them. We had received all the necessary PPEs yesterday. So, uh, around 6 o'clock, 6 p.m., we had everything. We spent time to um, put them together. And then this morning, teachers started coming first. Around six teachers were here, and then we gave them the PPEs, nose masks and the hand sanitizer. We have put all the vertical backers in vantage points. And then when students started coming, we checked their, their temperature. And then you, we have had some stands around the school. So when you check temperature, you're OK. You go to where your housemaster is. And then you register. And then when you register, this data you'll be giving your, your nose marks and your, and your hand sanitizer. And then another teacher will lead you to your dormitory where you sleep. In the, in, in the dormitory, you have distance the beds, and then uh, your number. The book of school use numbers, not names. So you put your number on your bed. That's where you're going to sleep. So when you do that, tomorrow morning, you'll come back to the classroom and then do the same. You distance that. Every classroom, some big classrooms have 30 students, and the smaller ones have 25. We've decided not to go beyond 30. So we put them in 30 and 25, and then we will put your number on your seat, your desk. That's where you will sit for classes and for prep. That's all right. Thank you very much. So we also have the Kumasi Metropolitan um, and, uh, Chief Executive, who is also touring some of the schools in the Ashanti region. And we'd want to know um, what he has observed so far. Um, good afternoon and welcome to join us. Um, sir, um, what have you observed going on your rounds to these um, senior high schools? Yeah, first of all, let me take this opportunity to thank the president for the president as well as the minister of education for the prompt delivery of the various items that are meant for the various school. Yesterday we took delivery of all the items meant for the various school and we distributed as such. Today all what we are doing is to visit all the schools under my jurisdiction to find out whether they've really gotten all the COVID-19 items that the president directed that it should be given to the various schools. And we are here at Opokuari. In fact, in entering the school, we saw that they have started observing the protocols in a very strict manner. All of us, they used a thermometer gun on us. And apart from that, we were packed. And immediately we packed, we saw the tables line up there where the registration is supposed to take place. The nurses were also there, meaning that they've really prepared very, very well. We've asked them about the Veronica bucket. They've received them all. The thermometer guns have also been received. And all the children that we, we also saw in the school have also worn their face mask. So on the whole, what we've seen so far is something that we can be applauded of. We have to thank them. We have to thank them for the straight adherence of the COVID-19 protocols. We know since the, these protocols are new to the senior high schools, there will be challenges um, in uh, putting in them in place. What are the challenges that you've identified so far or um, the school authorities have um, put before you? Well, I don't think there's going to be a lot of challenges because when, even when the children were at home, in fact, the use of the mask was not nothing new because even at their various homes, they were using the mask. Moving out, it was compulsory that before you go out, you have to wear the mask. And we know senior high school children are of age. 
and they will not always be limited by sitting in the various homes. So all the children that we've interacted with, all what they said is that it's just continuation of the COVID protocols here. And one thing that, to me, is also not going to pose as a challenge is that they are still in their various halls, except that now they've been spaced out. And because it's not all of them that are in the campus as at now, so others have been put into a different dormitory, well spaced out. Then if you go to the dining hall, well spaced out, from well. And that's the mayor of Kumasi there speaking to my colleague Nana Aljima. Express expect more from that conversation in later bulletins. I still have on joining you today with me, Daniel Daze. Up next is business, and in business we find that um, the the fees on on interoperable on interoperability transfers in mobile money that were waived um, have expired, and so now you will be charged when you're sending monies from one network to another. There's more in the business bulletin after this. And bringing us business is Sandra Esenama Fenu, who joins me from home. Hi, Sandra. Hello, Daniel. Good morning. It's Monday. How are you doing? I am blessed. How are you doing? Very well, thank you, Daniel. We have a lot on bus in business this morning, afternoon, I must say. It's our first business bulletin for the day. Let's go straight into action. And the National Board for Small Scale Industries has assured that it will soon begin disbursement of government stimulus package despite initial challenges. According to the board, the delay was due to some technical challenges encountered with the registration process. The board is giving the assurance that extending, after, um, extending the deadline for the application by six days. Koshi Yankaya is the executive director of the National Board for Small Scale Industries. I mentioned that we were ready and I think that over the past few weeks we have been saying that we're working towards it and yes we have been working towards it. As I mentioned as we were about to download to move on to it we realized some of these fraudulent activities that had to be rectified to avoid a backlash from that situation. And so that is what caused the delay and the backlog. With regards to disbursements, yes, as soon as possible. And all this process, as I mentioned, in terms of rectifying, in terms of ensuring that we have the right details of people. Because the situation we don't want is the backlash of, yes, we've received the information. We haven't verified uh, Momo numbers. We release the Momo, and you call and say it was sent to the wrong person. And so as much as possible, there's actually a lot more checks than we had assumed in terms of the work because there were so many wrong Momo numbers. The other challenge was people were in a rush to complete the application forms and put a lot of numbers. So when we moved it on to take a look at it, we realized that the numbers did not correspond with some of the names we had in the system. And that would have also caused another backlash if we had rushed through the process to do what it is that we were doing. As much as possible as well, we actually also waited to the last few weeks because as much as possible, we wanted to see as many more people who wanted to apply to come so there would be a fair process so we could see as much and then be able to make and take an informed decision based on the numbers. Assuming we had gone in the first week and given everybody and realized that there were a lot more or better applications that could come at the end of it. So to be more fair in the process, we had to wait a bit more to do that. As soon as possible, and I can guarantee that, the first leg of the disbursement, and in view of making sure that the right processes are put in place, and to ensure that it gets to the right people, we're looking at a two-step system, where the Adum loans, which is the micro loans, would immediately start being transferred and sorted to the beneficiaries. Then from there, in terms of the larger loans that take a lot more, a bit more assessment, we shall make those assessments as much as possible. Now, effective today, June 22, you will be required to pay the necessary charges and fees on mobile money interoperability as well as other digital banking charges. This is because governments with um, these transactions expired on June 20. George Yaffe has more in the following report that from this morning if you are moving funds from your mobile money to another network all the necessary charges will be applied also businesses and individuals that use the gifts instant pay and the ach direct credit would also be paying the required charges 
These waivers were introduced in March this year as part of efforts to reduce the burden on businesses as a result of the COVID-19. It was also aimed at encouraging the use of more electronic platforms in the country. For now, we are not sure about how this could negatively impact on individuals and businesses in terms of the cost of using these platforms and whether it could also affect it going forward. For instance, when the Ghana Interbank Payment and Settlement Systems earlier moved to end this service, this didn't go down well with users of a mobile money interoperability. I think introducing charges will be a deterrent because around this time, people are not even making more income. That the government took it off. I think it is helping. That is helping. So I, I think reintroducing it won't help. Because sometimes the money you are having is not even enough for you to get some certainty. So I think they should hold on for a little while. Then we see how the economy goes when we are stable with it. Then you can bring back that. But another question that will be lingering on the minds of consumers is that will this also bring an end to other services the commercial bank had to waive in line with this move by the Ghana Interbank Payment and Settlement Systems. It would also be interesting to gauge the use of this platform when we resume the charges and how the consumers would also respond. Others have also argued that since we're still not out of this COVID-19 issues, it might not be fair to actually resume the charges on all these platforms and banking services. Minutes on the marketplace. Again, we have more details on the marketplace in business. My name is Sandra Esenamak, and I've been doing this from home. And thanks so much for watching. Now, so Hi, Daniel. I can tell by how you're excited. It's just a matter of uh, when and if. Yes, yes. It, we just have to count down those six points. One down, five to go. And I'm beside <laughs> myself, I tell you. <laughs> Certainly there, but uh, Liverpool can wrap up the league title this week. But before we come to that, uh, we'll be starting with some Ghanaian football. And the Ghana FA is still waiting on the ruling uh, government to aid clubs with some form of financial support amid the coronavirus outbreak. Now, some weeks ago, President of the FA stated that, categorically, he stated that he was engaging with all the major stakeholders to ensure that the football family is included in the government stimulus package to alleviate some of the hardship on the footballing industry. However, with the final decision yet to be made, it seems as if government appears to be dragging its feet in offering support to the local clubs. And today, the GFA continues its pursuit of the stimulus package by government for clubs. And in the latest development, the FA delved into how the Ghanaian football industry is quantitatively affected uh, by football and uh, it talks about the strength of the football industry. And it just breaks down the numbers in terms of the football players right now and where they do fall in terms of the division. And uh, the Ghana Premier League currently has 1,019 players. Division 1 has 2,353 players. The Women's Premier League has 600 players. And then the Division 3 and 4, um, Division 2 and 3, sorry, has 43,700 players. And the juvenile leagues have about 23,000 players. So in total, there are 70,672 players who are currently being affected by the coronavirus. And the Ghana FA certainly did put this, um, this number together to try and show government the numbers that are being affected by football not being played. Now, the big question remains as to how clubs are generating income since football has been on a hold uh, since March due to the coronavirus. So as a result, most clubs are struggling to generate income. Remember, most of these teams make their money from match day and from selling merchandise and content. All that is generated through matches being played. And it's been over three months since any match has been played in Ghana. The Ghana FA continue, goes on to say that the figures represent only registered footballers. This is without coaches, administrators, medical and other essential service providers who are directly employed by the football industry. So I'm sure if you do add all these numbers, the, the numbers of uh, players and staff and administration and all the stakeholders could surpass 75,000 people who are currently being affected by football not being played. So that shows how significant uh, the fight by the Ghana FA is. And uh, you would have to wait and see how government responds to this in terms of the stimulus package. Uh, but before I do go, 
Let me just touch on some international news. And uh, the biggest one was Liverpool taking a step closer to the English Premier League, as we did rightly mention. They drew no nil in that messy side derby, a result that didn't surprise many, considering that Jürgen Klossmann have failed to score in three of their last four visits at Messi's side. And what that draw does to Liverpool now is that they can win the league this week. They are on 83 points after 30 games, Man City on 60 points, after 29 games. If Manchester City failed to win today against Burnley and Liverpool win against Jordan Ayew's Crystal Palace, and then Liverpool will be crowned champions. But still speaking of Jordan Ayew and Crystal Palace, Jordan Ayew also scored over the weekend, a goal that made him the highest scoring Ghanaian in the Premier League as he surpassed Tony Aboua's record of 24. Jordan now sits at 25 goals. That wraps it up for the sports segment. My name is Eric Wampo. Thank you very much, Oreku Ampofo. Uh, hopefully by next Monday, you'll be addressing me as a fan of the <laughs> English Premier League champion. <laughs> All the best, Daniel. <laughs> Thank you very much, Oreku. Have a good day. Um, of course, Oreku will bring us more updates in sports bulletins during the day. But now enjoy news today. It's time for world news.